Hey everyone, so we just did an AMD news announcement video about these, and now we're going to show you one of these delitted. I'm going to talk about some of the CPU physical design. This is going to be a pretty short video that overviews some of what you're looking at between these two pieces. We'll talk about why they design it the way they do, and uh, then you check out the news video for more information. But we're still on the road here traveling, so this is going to be a, a pretty quick, but hopefully fairly unique content piece for you to check out for the new Ryzen 7000 stuff. Before that, this video is brought to you by Linode. We've used Linode for our own hosting for about a decade now, and we've loved working with them. With Linode, you can build your own VPN that you fully control. You can build a Pi-hole DNS sinkhole to improve your network performance, or you can use other tools like Owncast to self-host your own independent streaming platform away from major providers. You can get a $100 credit when you use our link in the description below. Okay, so first of all, the quick recap is that we are on the road covering AMD's announcements of the Ryzen 7000 series CPUs. They launched 7950X, 7900X, 7700X, and 7600X, and the actual availability of those is September 27th. Check out our news video for full detail on it. But this is the piece that we got a hold of, and uh, it, it's not even technically delitted. It's almost as if it was never litted to begin with, because this is the cleanest IHS I've ever seen. And so if we take a closer look here, I'll walk you through some of the design choices. And I really quickly want to shout out Der Bauer as well uh, on YouTube, where Der Bauer or Roman has uh, a D litter he is currently developing. And I can't say any more about it right now. He's still in the development phases. But if you wanted to uh, D lid one of these on your own at some point, my understanding is he's going to have a tool available and a video out for you soon. So go check it out. All right. So. First of all, the CPU, everyone's already seen this sort of spider leg design where the IHS has uh, is it eight, yeah, it's eight different sort of outcroppings coming out of the IHS. IHSs like this are nickel plated copper, and then they use other platings inside to make the soldering easier. We'll talk about that soon. You can see that these small devices, so these service mount devices that are flanking it, which we commonly call SMDs, those small service mount devices are resistors, capacitors, things like that. And you know, it looks like an awful lot on the surface of the CPU if you're used to looking at, say, an Intel CPU. But if we look at the back of this one, you can see that the new AMD CPUs, since they are LGA or land grid array instead of pin grid array, means all the pins are in the motherboard socket instead of on the back of the CPU. So you look at the back of any Intel modern CPU, even AMD ones actually, you're gonna see all the caps and resistors down in the middle, like MLCCs and stuff. This one is just the pads. And because it's just the pads, that means that the actual size of the, this is called the substrate, the substrate is smaller, and uh, therefore the size of the socket and the motherboard is smaller. So there's some benefit there where you can make the footprint of the socket plus the, uh, the actual CPU physically reduced by moving all of these SMDs to the front side. So it's a bit of a cheat there where they've worked around one problem of socket size, CPU size, they've introduced a new problem, which is that it's very difficult to get all these on the front side and also have your IHS mounted uh, in a way that accommodates all of them. And so this is how you end up with this eight-legged design like the one we're looking at here. Another thing you could do to work around this is with like the Intel approach would be to increase the pin density uh, increasing the pin density is a bit of a, a different challenge because then you're putting a lot more pins in a smaller area and uh, that's not necessarily easy to do. So this was AMD's way out and it's got some benefits. One of them is that because the IHS is able to maintain this smaller square size, it allows for wider cooler compatibility. So uh, since this is more similar or maybe even exact, I don't have the, the normal Ryzen CPUs to measure, but uh, since it's closer to what we're used to, Existing coolers will fit on this pretty cleanly and they're backwards compatible. Uh, the motherboards that is with the older coolers as long as you buy the mounting kits. Uh, this, by the way, is a dead chip before anyone is concerned about the handling here. This is this is a mechanical sample only. It does not work. Uh, my understanding is it was killed in overclocking. So let's talk about the inside a little more. So for the inside of this thing, you can see that the SMDs do actually align with where the IHS is. Uh, we'll get a low angle shot of this because actually what's happening is in these gaps in between the legs here, the IHS is almost floating over the SMDs 
so that it can accommodate them. That is not for heat or anything like that. It's simply to accommodate the extra height of the SMDs and let them fit under there. I think Roman in his video will show you where they're putting some glue underneath the IHS to protect some of the SMDs closest to the socket, or maybe he's doing that, we'll find out soon, um, to protect them. I, but my understanding is AMD has to protect some of the SMDs that are really close to the solder areas where the die is getting soldered to the IHS. So uh, now we're onto the construction here. This is a gold plating and the layers we have are nickel plating. So that's what this coating is, the silverish one. The, the, you might say the nickel colored one. And then you have underneath that, just the copper. And then on the other side, you have nickel plating. And for the center patch here, we have a gold plating. You also see gold plating here. Uh, there's not any on the IO die. So for this chip, what you're looking at is two core complex dies. So these are the chiplets that contain the CCXs, the CCDs. And um, that would be where all of your, your cores are, your cache, everything like that. This larger die, many of you may already know, because this is, this is the same as it's been for years now, is the IO die. And uh, it could also serve as a chipset in some of the, like an A320 type of board, if it were compatible, but this one's not. So that's the construction. Now I have a great quote from Der Bauer explaining why the gold is used the way it is. So we're just gonna read that straight from him. Der Bauer said to me, quote, regarding the gold coating, there is the aspect that you can solder indium to gold without the need of flux. This makes the process easier and you don't need aggressive chemicals on your CPU. Without the gold coating, it would theoretically also work to solder the silicon to copper, but it would be more difficult and you would need the flux to break the oxide layers. So that explains the coating. Now they do coating on the IO die as well, just not on this one because it's a dead or an engineering CPU or whatever. Uh, the only other stuff on here, I mean, you can see some remnants of captain tape there, that piece of tape that tells me that this was probably in the XOC lab. I think that's where it came from. And there's some solder pads around the edges here that are unpopulated currently on this one. Maybe they'll be used in another. Uh, and other than that, I mean, this is pretty much how they all look, except some of the CPUs are going to miss one of these chiplet dies where it'll just be one chiplet die and then the IO die and that's it. So if you buy a 7600X, it'll only have one of these. 7700X will only have one of these. You get a 7950X, it'll have all three. That's a fully populated uh, Ryzen desktop CPU. As for actually delitting this, if you were to truly delid this, this one would be pretty tough to work with. So what they're gonna do is put little dots of a silicone adhesive, like a black adhesive on each one of these things. So instead of the older Intel way where they surround the entire thing with silicone adhesive, it's only gonna go on the feet here. and a silicone adhesive is one of the main barriers that reduces performance, but it's also necessary if you want to sell the CPU in the market to people who can just plug it in and use it. If you're delitting it yourself, you want to remove all that adhe adhesive because the what the adhesive does, obviously it keeps the IHS on the substrate, on the CPU, glues it together, but also adds a barrier. And that barrier introduces a height difference that you need to close with paste or with solder or with, as Intel calls it, stim. And so anytime you can get rid of a barrier and bring down the cooling layers, uh, like a cold plate and then, uh, or a, a heat spreader and then a cold plate, you're going to improve the performance. So they don't have too much silicone adhesive on this and uh, it is gonna be a huge pain in the ass to get it off though. So if you were to delid this yourself, the way you'd have to do it is probably heat it up with a heating element of some kind safely if you can. And then you would have to razor blade out the silicone adhesive and uh, keep it hot so that you can try to basically melt or liquefy the stem, and then you'd be in there. But obviously all these small devices, you gotta be careful with the razor blade to not cut them because you could, you could run without one, but it just depends which one it is. <laughs> Other than that, I mean, there's not much else here. It says AMD on the inside, I guess, some extra effort there. There's no labeling on the surface of this one yet, but they will have the CPU labels on them eventually. And that's, Pretty much it. I mean, I can't plug this into anything. One, I don't have a motherboard. And two, uh, they killed it in the XOC lab. So I'm hoping that's good news for extreme overclocking so we can get some liquid nitrogen and do some more of that with the new CPUs. But there's your I, first look from us of a delitted Ryzen CPU. And check out Roman's channel. He'll do another uh, probably little more deeper dive on one of these because I think he has a functioning chip. So he's going to test if he can delit it without killing it. But that's it for this one. Thanks for watching as always. 
to support our effort when we're on the, sh the road like this for shows and events, go to store.gamersaccess.net, grab something like a mod mat, a toolkit, or a, a coaster pack. Our current coaster pack is almost sold through. We don't have plans to reorder that design anytime in the immediate future, and we're trying to make it a collectible series. So if you want to get it, go to store.gamersaccess.net, and uh, for the next couple of weeks, actually, we're giving 10% of our store sales to the charity Cat Angels, which is a cat shelter. So thank you for watching. Subscribe for more. We'll see you all next time.